anyways, speaking of Barbie, um, Barbie is one of those movies that I got to say, when I first heard they were making this, I went, huh? They're making a Barbie movie? Really? I mean, look, you want to do IPs, that's fine. I, and look, Hasbro and, and has done things like Transformers. And we'll be, you know, we'll talk about that later on in the month of June. And you know, um, Transformers and and GI Joe and everything else. And it's just like, okay, I never thought I would actually get to see the day for a Barbie movie. So we're almost a month away. Okay, it's I believe July sixteenth. Um, or the 19th. Nonetheless, it's in the middle of July. And I went, hmm, okay. And it, look, I've been a stouch. Um, I, I haven't say I don't think this movie is going to do well because I want every movie to do well. You guys know that about me. It was the fact of the release date. And it was the fact that they were, and when I say they, I mean the studio, it was almost like they were completely isolating one whole gender and and look that's fine i mean you have as a, you know ron gosling's in this we have will ferrell so we have a couple of you know big name actors i okay had always made the the claim that i ne never knew how well it was going to do and i even asked jeremy about this yesterday I said you know we have oppenheimer because we were talking about that and then we have barbie coming out and then i said do you think that the second week of Mission Impossible, because it does come out the week before, could cannibalize some of the revenue. He, he didn't think so. And I hope he's right, because I want to see this do well. Anyway, so the reason I bring this up is because we got a brand new trailer today. And so trailers are always, and I've said this to you guys again, trailers are always meant to get, pique your interest. So if you're the very first trailer is saying, okay, we're coming out with this. The second trailer is to give you a little nugget about the actual um, film itself. And the third trailer, and that's what dropped today, gave us a larger, broader scope of what this film is going to be. And I was, I got to say, and I never revealed this. I may have revealed it to a couple people, and I had no inside knowledge about it. I was completely dead wrong. I was completely dead wrong what I thought this movie was going to be about. And I got to say, I caught myself chuckling a couple times in the trailer. Um, this looks fun. This looks, I'll admit it. I mean, this looks really, really fun. And um, it's one of those things where I think that I'm looking forward to it. I got to be honest. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to do a double feature. I will be covering it here on the channel. But um, I'm definitely going to go see this. So the reason I bring this up to you guys is because there was an article in the THR, the Hollywood Reporter, and Margot Robbie had talked about how she actually got into her character. And, and she, she said, quote, she is sexualized, but she should never be sexy. So... Margot Robbie used an episode of This American Life and Unpacked Society's historical sexualization of a doll that doesn't have any reproductive organs to help her get into character for the upcoming Barbie movie. The film star and producer spoke to Vogue alongside several other members of the Barbie creative team and cast about preparing the kind of iconic Mattel, uh, about preparing to play the iconic Mattel doll while going behind the scenes of the film's concept to completion, Robbie opened up about how she navigated getting into the character of Barbie. Robbie, who says she really didn't have to think about playing Barbie until years into developing the projects, the project. And she points to Gal Gadot, who was unavailable to star in the project at the time, as sort of a human personification of the character. Gal Gadot is a Barbie is Barbie energy, the actor producer said because Gal Gadot is so impossibly beautiful, but you don't hate for her because she is that beautiful, because she's so genuinely sincere and she's so enthusiastically kind 
that it's almost dorky. It's like right before being dork. The Birth of Prey, an icon and star, would also lean on director and co-writer Greta Gerwin, who helped her navigate uh, to help get her in the mind of the character. I was like, Greta, I need to go on this whole character journey. And Greta was like, oh, I have a really good podcast for you, Robbie recalls. That podcast was an episode of This American Life, who followed a woman who says she didn't have any, intro, quote, any introspective hardly ever, end quote, at all. You know how you have that voice in your head all the time, Robbie explained to the magazine. This woman, she didn't have that voice in her head. While that helped her get into the head of Barbie, getting into the body required a different conversation. Robbie said she had really unpack how the doll was being culturally sexualized. I'm like, okay, she's a doll. She's a plastic doll. She doesn't have any organs. If she doesn't have any organs, she can't have any reproductive organs. If she doesn't have any reproductive organs, would she ever feel sexual desire? No, I don't think so. I don't think she could, the Barbie star said. She is sexualized, but she should never be sexy. People can project sex onto her. Yes, she can wear a short skirt, but because it's fun and pink, not because she wants you to see her butt. In the Vogue piece, other interesting tidbits about the film's approach were revealed, including Gerwin's wrote a super, quote, abstract poem about Barbie, end quote, as part of the film's treatment, with the Oscar-nominated writer-director adding that it, quote, shares some similarities with the Apostles' Creed, end quote. At another point, Gerwin discussed that the order in which Barbie and Ken were created by Mattel, with Ken, quote, invented after Barbie, end quote, has resorted, has resulted into a sort of uh, creative myth that, quote, that is the opposite of the creation myth in Genesis, end quote. The cast has a number of, the cast also had a number of exchanges to support each other through the filming of the film, filming. Before they began in London, Gosling, who was unable to attend a slumber party thrown by Gerdewin for the film's Barbies in which Ken's were invited, but they couldn't sleep over, Spent, sent a special singing telegram instead. According to Vogue, it came in the form of an older Scottish man in a kilt who played bagpipes and delivered the speech from Braveheart. End quote. Robbie had her own gift for Gosling. She left a pink present with a pink bow for, from Barbie to Ken every day while, when we were filming, he said. They were all beach-related, like puka shells or a sign that said, pray for surf. Because Ken's job is just beach. I never quite figured I never quite figured out what that means, but I feel like I was trying to help Ken understand those through her gifts that she was giving. Okay, let's talk about it because I think this is very interesting. Okay, we always talk about how people get into characters and people want you know, they do their research about characters and everything else. Um, I gotta say, you know, when you look at the cast too, right? I mean, that's the other thing you got to do about this is you got to look at the cast. So we have, you know, obviously Margot Robbie's playing Barbie. We have Ryan Gosling playing Ken. We have Will Ferrell, who is in this as the evil Mattel CEO. We have America Fiera. We have a couple of other people. And, um, I think this is going to be fun. I really, really do. Um, it's one of those things where we never knew too much about it. And obviously that was made by design. I'm really curious to see this. I got to be honest with you. I'm really, really curious to see it. Um, and you know what? She did a hell of a job piquing my interest. And doing all this stuff. So we'll see where this goes. I'm, I'm really, I'm truly fascinated by this. And it's going to be a big day too. It's going to be a long day. Because of course we have Oppenheimer coming out the same day. You know, so we'll see about that. Anyways, guys, what do you think about this? What do you, what did, what did you think about the new Barbie trailer? And what did you think about the, you know, what she was saying about all the things in the article? Are you going to go see Barbie? Are you going to, you know, take somebody you know to go see Barbie? Or are you going to wait and be like, hmm, that's not really for me? 
Let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and I'll get back to everybody.